Okay. Hello, everyone. As I indicated in my email, we changed, I changed the next artist that we're doing to Alma Woodsy Thomas because who was it going to be? Marisol, another impressionist. And she is female, which is good because we haven't had any women artists yet. But I'm like another impressionist. The project is going to be pretty similar to ones that we've done before. I want to do something kind of different. So let's look at the presentation. Here is Alma Woodsy Thomas. I can see she is um, an African American artist of the 20th century. Um, I had never heard of her, but I found her art uh, pretty cool, pretty fascinating. And I think that it will be. Um, a uh, good exposure for the kids to something a little bit different. So she, like all the artists we studied, was a great artist when she was a little girl. Or um, she studied art in college. And she was one of the first African-American women to earn a fine arts degree in the United States. And we're talking in the, you can see from here, she was born in 1891. So she was going to school in the early 1900s. Um, but what she did for most of her life was she taught art in uh, junior high. And when she retired from teaching in 1960, she was 70 years old. She decided to focus on painting professionally. And that's when she became um, pretty well known in the 60s and 70s when she was like 70, 80 years old, which I thought was pretty neat. And she is what she does is kind of like abstract collage impressionism it's very neat um so let's go to the next one these are some of her early works you can see that they're abstract but this isn't really what um the rest of her paintings look like but you can point out just that she wasn't trying to represent images realistically she's just trying to capture feelings and ideas like an impressionist but um now we've moved into abstraction where it doesn't really look like the the thing at all. Um, and she lived in Washington, D.C. That's where she taught for, what, like 36 years um, in the house that her she grew up in. She, she lived in the house that she grew up in until she died. And she would sit in her kitchen and paint. And we're not talking a big house at all. And she would look out the window at these plants that were in front of her window and those were the inspiration for much of her paintings. Um, and you can maybe see some of that floral in the red abstraction one, or you could see different things, I'm not sure. But I, um, I read an interview with her on how she would just stare out that window and look at the play of the light on the flowers. And that was like, she didn't really go out, um, which is what a lot of like impressionists would do. And many artists go out to paint your subject. She was in her house. Um, um, so how, like I heard of her and she has become maybe more well known now, um, again, like 30 years after she was popular is that this painting resurrection, um, the Obamas put it in the permanent collection in the white house, um, in the old family dining room. So we can talk about maybe why is this called resurrection if anyone has any ideas and this is kind of her signature style of using like these inexact rectangles she's painting with um these ones are watercolors this i think she used a she moved on to acrylics um and using them kind of like collage painting with like these little pieces um to create these larger images um, that are abstractions. So this one, you could go to the White House and you could see it. And we're gonna be doing something kind of like this for our project. You'll see some other ones. So these ones, uh, air view of a spring nursery, a glimpse of Mars. It looks just like some dots, rectangles on a page here. Um, but she was part of what was known as the color field movements. So the artists used just like blocks of color to represent images and ideas. So that's kind of the definition of abstraction. Um, so she said that she would think about what would I see if I were in an airplane flying really fast? So these are her ideas of what if she were in an airplane or a spaceship, what it would look like. 
um, below the just the streaks of color. And here's some more cool ones. I like how this one, Apollo 12, splashed down. I don't know what this looks like. Let's just ignore that for right now. Um, it's still that collage kind of abstract, but you can see like some clouds and a mountain and it looks like the sunset or the sunrise. Um, so it's a little more concrete. Um, and then splash down Apollo 13. I mean, maybe she's thinking that's like what the Apollo 13 saw as it was coming down. I like this quote from her or she says, through color, I've sought to concentrate on beauty and happiness rather than on man's inhumanity to man. So she just wanted to paint things that were beautiful. She did one painting that was of like civil rights protest, but she really just didn't like realism. She just wanted to focus on things that made you feel happy. Um, okay, so autumn leaves fluttering in the breeze. You can see kind of that like stained glass effect of like the blossoms and the light coming through. Um, and it's interesting how she does give that impression of leaves fluttering without really drawing a leaf at all. I really like this last one. And she has some interesting titles to her. Red is as singing and dancing to rock and roll music. I think I have a typo in there. Um, but she did some paintings, if you guys remember Kandinsky, where he would kind of paint music. We did him like two years back. But she is painting the effects of sound um, and trying to show us what the music feels like. So I mean, kind of get an idea for the scope of her work. I mean, she had a very particular style um, and a lot of paintings that look um, in that similar style. But I think it's going to be a fun project. She died. I mean, she was painting maybe for like 15 years and her elderly years and she died at the hospital. She carried her paints and camp and paper to the hospital where she passed away. I was planning to do more painting. So that was, she spent her life teaching art, loving art. And I think that she would love this project because she spent, it says she would like organize kids in the neighborhood to do puppet shows. And um, she just loved working with kids, even though she didn't have any of her own and teaching them about art. So this is going to be a really short present, short presentation, short video for you guys to listen to, which we all love. Um, let's see. Stop screen sharing. Okay. So let me show you some examples of the project. So we have this. Obviously, it looks kind of like the resurrection one. This one, we're kind of trying to make like the clouds and the mountain and the sunset. This is more abstract one. So you're going to have this nice, I bought this nice paper. It's really thick. Um, but then we only have enough for each kid to get one piece. So don't mess up guys. Um, cause it was expensive. So it's really thick paper, one for each kid. And what they're going to do is I have big tubs of glue and some Dixie cups, which I forgot to bring to, but you know what that is. So you don't need every kid to have, you're gonna pour some glue in the cups, maybe two or three per table, and they're gonna have a paintbrush because if you just give them a glue stick or whatever, it's gonna be, they're gonna put too much glue on and it's gonna be a mess, it's never gonna dry. So what I want them to do is to you know, dip the paintbrush in the glue and you know, say, okay, I wanna do a row of squares. I'm going to paint just there and put on my scores. Okay, I kind of got ahead of myself. So we have the glue in the cups, the paintbrush, the paper, and they're going to have, there's just a ton of very colorful paper. So we have our colorful paper, all different colors. You decide what colors they want to use and just cut it into strips, cut the strips into tiny rectangles. If you have kindergartners, you might want to pre-cut some pieces. I think everybody else could handle, because it, it's really not that much cutting. You, take, you do a few strips and cut them into smaller rectangles. <laughs> smaller rectangles. And you decide what you're going to do. So you cut, pick some colors, 
cut some strips, cut some rectangles. Each kid will do. If you want to do any pre-cutting for younger grades, you can decide, but I think most kids could handle cutting their own rectangles. Um, and then they decide, okay, I want to maybe do something that looks like an actual abstract picture where maybe you could tell what some of the things are. Or I want to do something totally abstract, like, oh, this could be like <laughs> Pink Floyd's The Wall. It's breaking apart. I don't know. Or some, it could be kind of like butterflies coming out. Or they want to do something like this, like the resurrection painting. They decide, I mean, this might be easier for like maybe the middle grades. Something with just the lines might be easier for kindergarten just to do like that. And something like this might be um, the older kids might want to try. So they so cut out their pieces of their rectangles and then start painting glue on. Say I want it, I know I want to do something for the sky, paint a little bit of glue on, put the rectangles on for the sky, paint a little bit more glue on, do the next part. If you, you can paint the glue on the whole thing, but it's going to start drying. So just do a little bit at a time. But the idea is they're going to get a thin layer with the paintbrush. They're not just like pouring on globs of glue and it's getting all yucky with the paper. Um, so paint on the glue, put on a little bit of your picture at a time with the rectangles. As I was doing mine, it was because I was using a small amount of glue, it was drying as I went. And basically they should be able to just take it back to class. You don't have to worry about drying. These ones I didn't... Um, have the labels with me when I was making these, but basically we're just gonna put the label in here because the paper that I bought is big. It's already 11 by 14. It's gonna be too hard to mount it. This one you could. So what I would do is put the label on first before you hand out these pieces of white paper and then I can kind of work around it um, so that they can be displayed um, just as they are without you having to worry about mounting them on the black paper. So put the label on first they cut out their pieces, they make their collage using a little bit of glue with the cups and the paintbrushes. Pretty simple, but I think it'll be fun. Kind of an, a new different thing than we've done before, doing an abstract paper collage. Um, and that's it. Hopefully that will go smoothly. And I know this, because we got started late this year trying to get volunteers, we're kind of going late on each, um, like we're going to be starting the last artist later than I would like. I'll try to make that project pretty simple. This one's pretty simple so that um, we can get it all in. So let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for all your help. It sounded like Gaberti was a lot of fun. So um, hopefully this one will be too. Thanks so much.